Thank you for joining us on Black Investments Matter. I'm your host, Antoine Anderson, and we're going to get right into the topic of the day, and that is the uh, growing uh, issue of cryptocurrency as it relates to this Russian conflict. Now, we already know what's happening at the gas pump and those gas prices, but what do you think are going to happen to those crypto gas prices as more and more people figure out ways to move some of that Ukrainian currency or that Russian currency into crypto. And trust me, there are a lot of people looking at this. The major blockchains like Ethereum and Bitcoin are keeping a particular eye on this because we do not want those sanctions that are in place to be violated by use of the blockchain technology known as crypto. Now, first and foremost, I want to get this out the way. This is not financial advice. We don't do that here. What we are telling you to do or showing you is how to find information and to apply to your lives. And hopefully you take some information like that and use it for your own good. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is share my screen. And we're going to get right into it. Um, I want to draw your attention to two articles. First one is going to be the CNBC article that came out uh, March 4th, and it's talking about the three uh, questions that are on the minds of everybody involved in this cryptocurrency revolution as it relates to the Ukraine and Russia. First question, can cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin be used by Russia to avoid sanctions? That's a huge question. And we wanna pay particular uh, attention to this because if those sanctions are set in place so that we, as the consumer um, of all things you know, global or as a, as a producer or miner of cryptocurrencies, we wanna make sure that it's not being used as a tool to, to aid in a bed a hostile invader like Russia, all right? Can it be used to avoid sanctions? This is what uh, Ajun Karpal wrote yesterday, uh, on the 4th, that was two days ago. He said, after its invasion of Ukraine, Russia has been hit with a number of economic sanctions aimed at cutting the country off from global financial systems. Key Russian figures and uh, financial investors institutions have been placed on a U.S. sanctions list. That effectively prohibits American firms from doing business with them. Uh, we might also want to add um, the Japanese government, even the Swiss. Nobody is dealing with Russia right now. Meanwhile, the, the ruble has dropped, dropped to a fraction of its value. The sanctions have caused um, Russia to plunge. This has led to a debate on whether cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin, could pay, be a way for those sanctions listed to um, those, excuse me, this has led a debate about whether cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin, could be a way for those on sanctions list to evade the restrictions. This is uh, because Bitcoin and a lot of the digital currencies are decentralized. Now we're gonna get back to this term of decentralization and what it actually means. OK. Uh, when crypto is sent to all the users, it doesn't go through the traditional banking routes or what they call the financial plumbing. What actually happens with crypto, we use blockchain technology and a public ledger to track every transaction. Now, I take a little issue with uh uh, the lumping of all the cryptocurrencies into this whole decentralized bucket because it's not actually decentralized anymore. If you've uh, paid taxes this year, which I have, um, exchanges like Coinbase, things that are playing, uh, exchanges that are playing by the rules within the United States, they have regulatory um, uh, commissions in place. Um, a lot of rules, a lot of bureaucracy forms. The 1099B is one of the forms that you have to uh, fill out when you take any money out of crypto. Anything that causes a taxable event, um, you're going to report it. And 
in order to report it, it has to have a name assigned to it. Decentralized currencies, like some of the ones you might find on a, on a pancake swap or one of the BNCs, the Binance um, uh, exchange, they deal in a lot of these off-brand, and I wouldn't say off-brand, but a lot of the up-and-coming cryptocurrencies that don't have these regulatories that are not based in the United States. And that, there lies the difference. Um, while Ethereum and Bitcoin, the two biggest players, they're pretty much heavily regulated already. It'll be very difficult, as Arun um, points out, the biggest misconception is that it's unreachable in cryptocurrencies. First, blockchain technology is the underpinning of this public ledger. This is what we have already talked about. It does not make it a good tool for avoiding sanctions because you can directly track it. And that tracking is verified by every computer on the block. All right. The biggest misconception about crypto remains that it's untraceable and that it's primarily used for nefarious purposes. That is not the case, which couldn't be further from the truth. And this is VJ AR, Vice President of the Corporate Development and International at Crypto Exchange Luno. All right. Meanwhile, there isn't enough liquidity for Russian oligarchs and companies to move their money around. So all these billionaires are trying to avoid, uh, you know, they're falling or declining fortunes as the ruble has just plunged to, to unimaginable depths. It's not so easy to transfer that money into a cryptocurrency because people are going to be on alert, all right? Exchanges that operate with a strong process of codes and conducts will no doubt be watchful at the moment uh, for these funds and for the various organizations. Uh, this is Charles Heyer, uh, CEO of a data firm called Crypto Compare. On Thursday, Brian Armstrong, CEO of uh, Cryptocurrency Exchange and Wallet Coinbase, backed up many of these points in the thread. He said that every U.S. business has to follow the law. In other words, it ain't going to be. It doesn't matter if your company handles dollars, crypto, gold, or real estate, even non-financial assets. Sanctions laws apply to all U.S. people and businesses. You as an American will probably not be involved in what's going on. That's what they're saying. Um, now, does that mean that other countries can't operate in that space, drive the um, price of Bitcoin through the roof, um, things going hyperbolic? We do not know yet. We're just going to have to wait and see. Now, this information is out here in order for you to be better informed. Now, I want you to pay attention to that um, article again. It's a CNBC article that was um, published March 4th, 2022. Um, by Arun Kapal, that's Arjun Kapal, A R J U N Kapal, K H A R P A L. Very good article. Definitely check it out. The other side of the coin, no pun intended, is this article by Forbes magazine. And I want you guys to pay attention to this crypto interrupted how the Russian invasion dramatically changed Ukraine's blockchain strategy to focus on the war. So, a while back, few of the countries trying to build their economies, and this is one of the biggest saving factors of cryptocurrency, is that up and coming economies like the ones in Africa, like the ones in Venezuela who are trying to go to a completely crypto based economy, they were betting so much on blockchain that to offset the serious issues of their economy being just stomped by the dollar, they were thinking that, hey, if we tie our economy to some, something that's on uh, a blockchain technology, allow us to spend, allow people to spend money or cryptocurrencies in our countries, we might finally be able to uh, compete with the dollar. All right. Here's what is written by Stephen Ulrich. And uh, He's a, uh, an editor or contributor to, to the Forbes staff. Crypto was supposed to be Ukraine's launch pad in the future, he says. Instead, of, instead, it's proving to be a necessary lifeline in the country ravaged by war. Since Russia's invasion on February 24th of Ukraine 
has raised more than 56 million in donations spread across assets such as Bitcoin, Ether, Polkadot, Solana, Dogecoin, Tether, and more. These funds have gone to help humanitarian agencies distributing aid in the country, procure necessary supplies for soldiers such as food, uniforms, and bulletproof vests. They're also being used to help Ukraine's growing ranks in cyber warriors, which has reportedly defaced Russian government websites, blah, 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 provided intelligence and taking down military systems. That's huge. All right. However, this was never the plan. They never envisioned this money-making tool to be so um, instrumental in fighting back against this invasion. All right. Ukraine's Deputy Minister of uh, for digital transformation, Alexander Bor Bornikov says that digital assets and the blockchain, blockchain technology were meant to help revitalize the Ukrainian economy and bring all government processes online. He noted that the ministry's mission founded two years ago is to move 100% of the government services online and be a digital state to make all government services transparent, easy to use, and confident for the citizens of Ukraine. Now, this is important because we're always talking about liquidity. Liquidity is the key here. Um, a lot of those plans that they had and those dreams that they have for this you know, crypto-based country economy, um, such as blockchain issues, such as the creation of a central bank digital currency, um, it started when the Minister of Digital Transformation and his team helped create a law a year and a half ago to legalize digital assets in the country and make UK one of the most crypto-friendly countries in the world. Big dreams. However, it didn't work out that way. Instead, the Ukrainian government looked for ways to use this knowledge in crypto and digital assets to support the war effort. Um, this is huge. There are many reasons why a lot of people were uh, fearful of cryptocurrency, namely its potential to rival dollar globally, you know, on a decentralized network, not going through financial um, ex um, uh, exchanges or foreign, ex foreign exchanges to, to transfer dollars into nationalized country fiat currencies, all right? We wanna be very um, careful of how we proceed as American, because we enjoy the dominance of the dollar here, all right? Um, any threat to that could send our economy into a tailspin. So we wanna be very careful. Now, I'm mentioning all this information because I think you people need to understand that everybody needs to understand, not just you people, where did I get that from? Anyway, you need to understand how relevant this news is. There are people who are talking about Ethereum and Bit, um, Bitcoin going hyperbolic, meaning that the current prices that we're seeing, we could finally see a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, or we could see a thirty or fifty thousand dollar Ethereum. That's some of the hype that's out there, even to this day. Um, is it possible? It's possible. But again, as I stated earlier, we're not here giving advice on what you should do. That's what you should be looking for. And paying attention to these articles are the best and only way to uh, keep abreast of what's going on here in the crypto sphere. Um, I'm going to keep this posted for a while. And I just want to see what kind of feedback you got. If you got any questions, please feel free to reach out to the Black Investments Matter Facebook page, Black Investments Matter uh, webpage, or you know, just email us at blackinvestmentsmatter.com. We have a bunch of opportunities, about a bunch of things going on uh, with getting the word out. Uh, sorry for going so long, but I think you definitely need to stay on top of this one. And I will see you on the flip side. Thank you very much.